Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Good morning and thanks for waking up with us today. I'm Justine Stewart. And I'm Lewis Dorch. Hope you're having a great start to your Monday. If I had just a little advice this morning for the people out there, Justine, <laughs> it'd be bundle up one thing, but also if you haven't gone anywhere over the weekend, Give yourself a lot oh, of time to scrape that it's car It's going to take off. a while. Yeah, we were talking about, luckily both you and I went out <laughs> yesterday. Because yesterday. that snow on there, you know, it was hard. It was that icy, just yeah. hard to get off. Yeah, because it was, it was kind of almost that really wet snow mm -hmm. on Saturday and then all that froze with the cold air. So again, give yourself some extra time this morning and bundle up and we are seeing those slippery roads. And we do have wind chill advisories in place. This is anywhere in that teal color through 1 p.m. this afternoon. Wind chill values could be anywhere from 20 to even 40 degrees below zero waking up this morning. And this isn't even the coldest weather that we're going to see so far. Is this going to be even colder waking up tomorrow morning? By this afternoon, yeah, chilly out there. 12 in Missoula, 15 Kalispell, 15 Hamilton, or excuse me, 11 in Hamilton. We'll see 12 in Polson. Here's your forecast headline. So the snow moves out, but the cold moves in. Highs in the teens uh, for Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday. Now, quiet week, but a cold week as temperatures are going to be well below average all week long, but it is going to be dry. Active weather returns, though, with chances of snow moving in by the weekend. The search continues for a backcountry skier who was missing near Big Mountain. Multiple search and rescue teams have been bearing those cold temperatures and strong winds looking for the Flathead resident. Sheriff Chuck Curry says they received a call Saturday at around 2.30 reporting that the skier did not return home from a backcountry excursion. The man was skiing alone and out of boundaries on a backcountry trail. Initially, North Valley Search and Rescue were active until 3 a.m. Saturday night. Flathead Search and Rescue joined in on Sunday morning, but Curry says the weather conditions made it challenging. Uh, as you can imagine, the weather conditions have made this search pretty challenging for us. We were able to get the Two Bear Rescue helicopter up for a few hours today, but uh, the conditions are pretty extreme up there between the uh, lack of visibility, blowing snow, uh, high wind. Curry says that they have identified the man but are not releasing his name yet. But we were told he is an experienced backcountry skier. Stay tuned with KPAX and KAJ online and on air for this, the latest on this ongoing story. An avalanche warning is in effect for the west central Montana backcountry as very dangerous avalanche conditions exist. The West Central Montana Avalanche Center says that travel in and around avalanche terrain is not recommended and large human triggered avalanches are likely. This danger rating does not apply to operating ski areas and is the sole responsibility of the U.S. Forest Service. For the first time, the University of Montana's Black Student Union is hosting a Black Solidarity Summit. The summit will last two days with representatives from Black Student Unions, African Student Associations, and Black Studies programs around the Northwest. All will be in attendance to address issues of racial discrimination, political, disenfranchisement and social organizations as well as black academic enrollment, retention and recruitment and their respective campuses. Organizers hope that people will leave this year's summit with a new perspective and more knowledge on the subjects they hope to discuss. We're moving in a really great direction. I'm excited to see you know what the next 50 years brings. It was started by some really awesome people and I'm, I'm just so honored to be a part of a legacy like this one. 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of the Black Studies program at UM. The program at the U began in May 1968 and making it the third oldest in the U.S. Former Montana Governor Judy Marks is well known for being the state's first female governor. But did you know she was also the first female from Montana to compete in the Winter Olympics? MTN's Jacob Furr sat down with friends and colleagues of the former governor to look back at her time in speed skating. Judy Martz was, by all accounts, a groundbreaker, someone who wasn't afraid to tackle a new challenge, and it was that courage that not only got her to the governor's mansion, but also to the 1964 Winter Olympics. I don't think she ever thought about competing until she um, happened to watch Sylvia. You know, Sylvia was her, her colleague. They struck up an acquaintance, and Sylvia asked if she would uh, run a race with her. So the two of them raced, 
and Judy actually won by about two yards, which was a very narrow margin. And she got the bug. Indeed, at just 21 years old, Judy traveled to Innsbruck, Austria, competing in the women's 1,500-meter speed skating category, the two of them becoming the first Montana women to compete in the Olympic Games. And it was a challenge. She only skated one race, and um, she sort of lost her focus and spun out and slid on the ice and really couldn't regain her position again. But that didn't seem to matter. Friends and colleagues who met Judy later in life will attest she had the spirit of an Olympian. There was never anything she would back down from. She loved a challenge. She got herself back up, finished the race, and still took 15th in that race, which is a pretty remarkable. But um, she used that story to, to emphasize the point that you know, if you lose your focus, you know, you set your goals and don't lose your focus because if you do, you might fall. But then she would also say, but if you do fall, mm -hmm. you get back up and you, yeah. and you finish that race. She always said that she didn't come home with a gold medal. Uh, and so she didn't have something she had to lock away in the bank box. <laughs> but she did have uh, a golden experience, and she always kept that locked in her heart. While that was the end of her Olympic career, Judy never lost her passion and competitive spirit. Judy's board and commissions advisor Susan Ames recalls a time when Judy was skating with children. They said, well, let's just skate on down. And so they're, they're going on down this rink, and pretty soon Judy, <laughs> Judy starts going, and a little bit faster, a little bit faster, and pretty soon, soon she, you know, she had to win. And she said later to me, she said, I felt so bad being competitive with those little kids, but I just had to win. She had a competitive spirit she in did. everything she, she to, did. She did. A competitive so there was spirit. There nothing that she wouldn't take on no, exactly. and surprise us. Judy was blazing a trail in other areas of life as well, becoming Miss Rodeo in 1962, the first female lieutenant governor of Montana in 1997, and of course, the first female governor in 2001. Judy March really was a, ground a groundbreaker. You know, she was first uh, in, in several areas here in Montana. In oh, yes, so I would consider her a pioneer. Yes. yes, for sure. She will be remembered as a very um, special person yes. who kind of set the state on fire. <laughs> she did. <laughs> she did. Well, if you are commuting this morning, many roads across western Montana are ice and snow covered. The Montana Department of Transportation reported several issues across the area Sunday. In Missoula, a multi-vehicle crash closed Madison Street Bridge for some time. A jackknife semi-truck was reported on I-90 near Garrison Junction. A semi-truck also blocked one lane of I-90 West near mile marker 15. So many slide-offs in over the last 24 hours, according to Montana Highway Patrol. Over 30 drivers were in need of assistance. All right, let's send on over to Lewis now this morning. He's standing by with your forecast today. All right, thank you, Justine. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, some slippery roads this morning. Now, not as bad as what we saw over the weekend, but still, we are getting a lot of snow and a lot of ice on the road. So give yourself a lot of time before you head out. Here's a few pictures that I want to show for you. This was sent into us by Cindy down in the West Yellowstone area over the weekend. She was hanging out down there. She said they got a lot of snow down there. So Cindy, thank you for this one. Have one more that was sent in to, uh, by her as well. She said this was the stairs leading to her room. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of drifting snow coming through the cracks there. As we know, the winds really picked up on Saturday afternoon and then into Sunday as well. Now, right now, really cold out there. We're at 4 Kalispell, 4 Polson, 4 Missoula, 8 below in Sealy Lake, 10 below in Phillipsburg, 3 in Hamilton, 1 below in Sula, 9 St. Regis, 10 waking up this morning there in Thompson Falls. And it's going to be overall a chilly week. So look at our five-day temperature trend. This is for Missoula. Here's where our average line is. 40 degrees is where we're normally at this time of year. We are going to be well below that all week long, but we are going to stay dry. So no uh, significant storms in the forecast. It looks like this weekend, that's when we'll bring back the next chance of seeing some snow showers. So look at the jet stream. This is where what we're going to be tracking as we move throughout the next several days and even pushing into next week. And we're going to keep below average temperatures in the forecast. And we'll watch this on the jet stream. Look at this Arctic plunge that we roll in for today. Not as cold by the end of the week, but still, Notice where this jet stream is. So we're still talking about highs 
only in the teens and 20s as we move into Thursday. Then models indicating maybe another Arctic blast moving in on Sunday. That could be our next chance of seeing some snow showers as well. And as we roll all the way into next week, we're just continuing to keep this pattern up of colder than average temperatures for the northwestern part of the country. And then as you head further off to the south and east, that's where we're going to see well above average temperatures, but just expect some cold next couple of days for us here in Montana. Here's your seven day forecast for Missoula. Again, our average high for this time of year is 40, well below that temperature for the next seven days. Uh, Kalispell will be dry all this week, but cold. And then our next chance of snow is going to move in Saturday and Sunday. Hamilton will see 11 today, 18 on Tuesday. We'll see highs in the 20s. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with lower 30s and some chances of snow moving in Saturday and Sunday. Wow, winter definitely back. It's such a change <laughs> from what we were talking last about. Last week, I mean. Yeah, last week or two weeks ago when we were getting pictures of flowers popping yeah. up. Temperatures were in the 40s and 50s. Now we're in the teens and 20s for the rest of the week. All right, we'll stick around. We're back with much more coming up after the break. But first, here's some birthday shout outs for you this morning.